we're going to take a look at word order using Stompy. We're going to start with the golden rule that explains Stompy, but also if you don't start with a subject, you need to remember this rule. Whatever you start with, the verb comes next. So let's discuss the Stompy rule. Okay, so S is for subject, okay, and that describes who or what is doing the action. Then we have verb one, which is just basically the first action word in the sentence. Then we have T for time, which describes when this action happens. Then we have O for object, which describes who or what the action is happening to. Then we look at M for manner, which describes how the action happens. P for place, which describes where it happens. Then we have the second verb in the sentence. And then we have the infinitive. So an infinitive of a verb is just to do or to catch. It's, it's an untime specific happening and is usually indicated by om and then ta. But that's kind of boring. You know that already. You know how to use Stompy in the form starting with subject. So let's mix it up a little and try and start with some other letters, some other parts of the sentence. So what happens if we don't start with the letter S? Remember the golden rule. Whatever you start with, the verb comes next. And then the rest of Stompy. Verbs are action words. You can see these two little boxes here. And quite clearly, verb one is a pretty vicious man. And he doesn't give up his spot easily. So if you give him second position, he will not take third or fourth or anything like that. So even if you change the sentence, you need to make sure he comes in second. He's an action verb and he'll take you on if you don't. So, how can we start? Like I said, the rule just applies except with the object. You just start with whatever you're going to start with, the verb comes next, and then whatever's left of Stompy in the Stompy order. So you can see here we begin with time, verb 1, S-O-M-P, verb 2, I. And it just carries on for all the different parts, except for when we start with object, which has different rules. So what are these different rules? If we start with the object, we move it to the beginning of the sentence, and the object becomes the subject, okay? And then we have verb one as vort, okay? This, this then kicks the original verb one to the end of the sentence in position two, okay? And then the subject becomes the object and starts with the word dir. So the action is being done by whoever, all right? Because we're starting with the object, which became the subject, and then we need to have the subject that's now become the object to describe who's doing the action, okay? Then that verb one that got moved to the end of the sentence uh, becomes the verb two. But that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense by itself. So we'll do an example of that just now. But before we do, I want to show you a couple of other examples. So, let's start with this sentence. Ek doen alke aand my huiswerk vinnig by die huis. And you can see that it's in the correct order of Stompy. And I've indicated here what the order of Stompy is. If we start it with the time word, alke aand, then we put the verb next, alke aand doen, and then the rest of the sentence in order. Ek my huiswerk vinnig by die huis. And that gives us alka aunt dunak my heiswerk vinnig by die heis. Can you hear that it sounds wrong if we say alka aunt ak dun my heiswerk vinnig by die heis? It doesn't totally sound like something an Afrikaans person would say. Okay, if we start with the manner, we do the same thing. We start with manner, vinnig, how this verb was done. And then we put the verb in, 
because remember, he's an action verb. And like the action movies, they like to fight a lot. And they're not going to give up their place. So, vinnig, doen, ek, and then the rest of stompy. Ek, alke aand, my huiswerk, by die huis. Vinnig, doen ek, alke aand, my huiswerk, by die huis. Okay, let's try starting with place. By die huis, doen ek, alke aand, my huiswerk, vinnig. We've done the same thing. We've put place in the beginning, the verb in the next position, and then the rest of the sentence in exactly the same order. Okay, but what if we start with the object? Remember I said this one's quite special. Okay, so we start with the object, my, my huiswerk. And then the verb one becomes word. Okay, my huiswerk, word. And after verb one comes the subject. But remember we have to describe that it's being done by someone. And dear indicates that. Okay, so my huiswerk, word. Dear ek, and then the rest of the sentence in the same order, alke aand vinnig by die huis, and then we have what was originally the verb one, gedoen. What you'll notice here is that that verb that was originally the first verb changes to past tense. This is just part of how we make the object the start of the sentence. My huiswerk word dear ek alke aand vinnig by die huis gedoen. So, now that we've gone through those, you can see that you can work with word order and not just in standard stompy form beginning with the subject. But you may have noticed that I skipped something. What about starting with a verb? Well, as you'll notice, even in English, if you say, I can, and then you start the sentence with the verb, can I, that suddenly becomes a question. It's no longer a statement. The same is true in Afrikaans. Ek kan? Kan ek? Now, we may not have yet analysed the word order, but we know that if I have a two-word sentence and I start with one word, Obviously, the next word is going to be the only word that's left. So, that's the order that we've put it in here. But what I wanted to demonstrate is how it becomes a question, and it's no longer a statement of fact, without adding any question words to the sentence. Remember how I said that verbs are action words, and like in action movies, they want to take anybody on. So... We never take them away from their second place. But do you agree that if they won a fight, they'd probably be pretty happy to take first place. So, we can move verbs up, but we can't just magically move them down without replacing them with another verb that won the fight. So, in this case, we move it up. Alright? So then the word order becomes... Verb 1, and then the rest of Stompy. See, the golden rule still applies. Whatever you start with, the verb comes next. We've already used the verb. So, what comes next? Oh yes, the rest of Stompy, in exactly the same order. So, we can change the same sentence into a question by starting with the verb. Ek doen alke aand my huiswerk vinnig by die huis. Starting with the verb doen, the rest of the sentence follows in the same order. Ek alke aand my huiswerk vinnig by die huis. Doen ek alke aand my huiswerk vinnig by die huis? We need to remember to give that little lift at the end of the sentence that indicates that it's a question. But starting with a w verb, will generally indicate that it is a sentence. But remember that speaking is not just about being able to communicate with the right vocabulary or with the right grammar, but also about how we inflect things and how we say things and how we pronounce them. So, make sure that your voice indicates that this is a question. Do not alke aand my huiswerk by die huis?
All right, so remember the two golden rules. The first one, stompy, okay? And then the second rule, whatever you start with, the verb comes next. And then the rest of stompy in exactly the same order. All right, that brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for going through Stompy with me. Now you know how to start your sentence with anything other than the subject. So that's time, object, manner, place, and the um, infinitive. You can also begin a question with a verb now. Well done. Uh, please check out all my other videos and I hope that uh, all of these videos are helping you. If they are, please let me know by commenting or subscribing. Thanks.